Welcome to 2 Timothy 2.15, where the Bible declares to study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be shamed, but rightfully divided in the word of truth. This is 2 Timothy 2.15, with your host, Apostle James H. Williams, the pastor and the founder of the House of Prayer, Praise, and Worship. Hear ye him. So what are we gonna do? I like the presence of the old. We're gonna bring it to the new. Apostle wisdom ready to come and teach you to study to show that self approval to God to be a workman. Need to never be ashamed. Welcome once again to the whole of, whole arm of God victory broadcast where I'm the chief apostle and prayer lead of the house of prayer, praise and worship. There where the Bible said man must always pray and God inhabits his praise of his people and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit, worship in spirit and truth. Our church logo or slogan is this is a church of reality as it is seen in the world but according to the word of God. Today we're continuing with our Bible study. Um, I am saved, now what? Part four. Let us pray. Father, we give you honor, glory, and praise as we go into this Bible study. Um, give us the anointing that makes teaching easy and receiving easier. Break up all foul ground that the word might go forth on good ground and bring forth good fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. <clears throat> My subject is Holy Ghost Fire. We left off about baptism and where John had said, well, let's go to it. First text, um, 1 John, or they call it I John sometimes, 5, the 5th chapter, the 6th through the 8th verse says this. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is truth. For these three that bear record, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So what we're going to talk about is the Holy Ghost as the third person of the Godhead, okay? And what his function is. Remember, it's not an it. It's he's a he. It's a personality. One of the first functions is underline a circle, spirit of truth. The sixth verse why is it important to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Because he is the spirit of truth. He will always give you just the truth. If you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you let the Holy Ghost lead you, he'll tell you the truth about yourself. He'll tell you the truth about other people, other things, your situation. One thing I like about the Holy Ghost, he don't lie to you. If you're a mother, father, sister, brother, whoever laid on their deathbed, and you got the Holy Ghost and you pray. The Lord, you know, I want them to live. The Holy Ghost will tell you they're not going to live if they're going to die. They're going to say they're not going to live, they're going to die. He doesn't encourage people in a lie. He's going to tell you the truth. You're up. Okay. All right. Now, we see it says, you'll never see the word Trinity in the Bible. So if you say, I don't believe in the Trinity, the Trinity is not even in the Bible. Mm -hmm. No, Trinity is a word that we made up to describe the Godhead. Mm -hmm. And we see that there's a, a triune Godhead in the seventh verse. Father, the Word, which is Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and the Holy Ghost. And it says these three agree in one. They're one. Amen. With three functions or three manifestations. The word manifestation means shows up. Okay, in Genesis 1 and 2, it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay? So, I did a study on that. You see the word in spirit is in red. It said it moved upon the face of the waters. Whenever God, the Father spoke it, God the Son, Jesus made it, God the Holy Ghost, and it's the Holy Ghost now that's keeping everything in order. Okay? Because in Revelations it talks about how the, the, the moon and the stars are going to fall from the sky. So the Holy Ghost is even gravity. The Holy Ghost is keeping everything in proportion. That's why the earth is not flung into the sun. The moon is not bumping into the earth. Amen. So the Holy Ghost, or people say the Holy Spirit, I like to say the Holy Ghost, is doing all the work. So I define spirit. I define spirit for you. One of the names for spirit 
of the Holy Ghost is Rock Elohim. Rock Elohim. When God breathed into man the Rock or the Rock, he became a living soul. He breathed into him his spirit. Another word for spirit, whether it be demonic or any other spirit, is Numa in the Greek. We need to know this because we want to deal with it in the Greek as well. Another uh, depiction of the spirit is wind, breath. Sometimes the Holy Ghost is depicted as fire, and also the Holy Ghost is called a gift. So when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that's a gift that God gave you. Okay, let's read this at the bottom. It says, we, see, we have seen previously that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and the second person of the Trinity was involved with God the Father in the creation of everything in John 1, 1 through 3. Now in Genesis 1, 2, we see the Spirit of God who also is involved in creation, the Rah Elohim. The Hebrew word for spirit is often translated as wind or breath in the Old Testament. The same word is found in, in Psalms. We see, because people don't know that the Holy Ghost was here, okay? The Holy Ghost was here. People who don't know will say, you don't see the, nothing to mention about the Holy Ghost to the New Testament. But we see the Holy Ghost in the beginning of creation, and we're going to see where he was all throughout the Old Testament. He's found in Psalms 33 and 6, where we again catch a glimpse of the Spirit's work in creation. He reiterates about creation. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all of the host of them by the breath or the spirit of his mouth. The next verse is this Psalms uh, continues. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses, Psalms 33 and 7. In um, the Ten Commandments, when the breath of God blew the water and it stood up on the sides. Amen. That was the Holy Ghost holding the water up. Certainly, this should remind us of how the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters in Genesis 1-2. If we look close, closer at the word hovering, we find that it conveys the idea of a bird sitting in a nest, hovering or brooding over her eggs, caring for the new lives. The same word is used to describe how an eagle stirs up its nest and it hovers over its young in Deuteronomy 32 and 11. Continuing on to page two, it says, What a beautiful picture of God preparing uh, to bring life into the world through his spirit. God designed all creation for life, our life. But his spirit, God, adorned the heavens, according to Job 26, 13. And they were designed with us in mind. So moving right along, because we have a lot of ground to cover. Matthews 1 18 verse says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So uh, Mary was a virgin, exposed means she was uh, engaged to marry Joseph. And before they can get married, the Holy Ghost had came upon her and impregnated her. So what I want you to understand is receiving the Holy Ghost is a type of intercourse. It's not a sexual one, but it's an intercourse. And from the time that you receive the Holy Ghost, he will constantly interact with you. He comes inside of you to live forever. Okay? But he came inside of Mary and impregnated her. So that means that Jesus is God. He wasn't, she, he wasn't impregnated. She wasn't impregnated by Joseph. Okay? So how do you prove that a, a baby is... Um, the father of the baby. You have to take a blood test. Right. So that means that Jesus shed his blood, which means he shed his own blood. He shed God's blood. Because right. the Bible says that his name will be Emmanuel, which was a title, which means God among us. And this is how he came. By the Spirit of God. Okay, the, th the 19th verse says this. Then Joseph, her husband, being, uh, being a just man, not willing to make a public uh, example, was minded to put her away privately. Because usually when you find out a woman's not a virgin or she's pregnant, you know, you go out in the public and make it a big thing. They even stone him and stuff. But he loved her and he was a good man, so he said, I'll just put her away privately. You know, and won't let nobody know. But the 21st says, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, the son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, 
but that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Okay? So we see that one of the jobs of the Holy Ghost was to impregnate Mary with a baby. Okay? So to, to contemporize and bring it up to the day, if, if women say they're bad and they women can't have babies, the Holy Ghost can get inside there. There's been stories about women who had total hysterectomies. And they went to healing services and got prayed for. And the Holy Ghost went in there and reconstructed the whole womb. They got pregnant and had a baby. Amen. This is where miracles come from. The Holy Ghost is what do the work today mm -hmm. until Jesus come back and take us out of here. Matthews 3 and 11. The 11 verse says, I indeed, John was baptizing and he was informing the people. He said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that come up after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And remember, we talked about y'all supposed to have done your homework and define what the word fire meant. Y'all got time, catch up with it. All right, but the fire is the picture of sanctification. In other words, everything that's inside of you, that sin nature to do things wrong, the Holy Ghost, which is also depicted as fire, will burn it up out of you and clean you up. I used to do seven different drugs every day in my body. I never went to an AA program. I did crystal meth. You know, I did, um, they, they called it ice back in the day when I was coming up. Before it came out, I never got done crack. This crack didn't come out. If it did, I probably would have. But I did cocaine and marijuana and um, um, what they call them, specs acid. And I did, um, I drank tequila every morning before I brushed my teeth. A vodka, marijuana, you name it. I laced my cigarettes and cocaine. I used to base cocaine and all this stuff. And I never went to a program till this day. I am 30 some odd years clean from all drugs. Never went back to it, including smoking cigarettes. Because when I got baptized with the Holy Ghost, he began to burn that stuff up out of me. The Bible says, he who the Son has made free is free indeed. So I have nothing against AA, but I never needed AA. I never needed NA. You know, after a while, I went back there and ministered at AA and told the people, listen, if you get the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is also will free you from all addictions. Amen? Okay, so he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Um, Matthew 3.16, the 16th verse says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, later on, Jesus walked up on him. Remember, we studied this the last time and said, I need to be baptized. He said, I, I should be, you should be baptizing me. But he got baptized as our perfect example. Because we have to get baptized. And it says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight out of the water, and lo, the heavens opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God. Now, this is God seeing the other Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. Okay? Descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Also, the dove is also another symbolic uh, ism of the Holy Ghost. Another symbolic ism of the Holy Ghost is oil. That's why we get oil, olive oil. Amen? And we anoint people with it as symbolic of the Holy Ghost touching them. Okay, Matthew 4, 4 and 1. says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Okay, we see here, I got led up of the Spirit underlined. So that tells us that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is here to lead us. Now, you got to understand He's not going to always lead you the way you want to be led. Remember, he's leading you. You're not leading him. He led Jesus to be tempted of the devil. So don't think that the Holy Ghost is going to lead you, you know, into some sweet stuff all the time. Sometimes he leads you to go face to face with the devil and have it out with the devil. But because he had the Holy Ghost, he was going to conquer the devil. And he did. Matthew's the seventh chapter, um, the third page. Matthew's the 7th chapter, the 9th through the 11th verse. Uh, we're talking about the attributes of the Holy Ghost. Or people say the Holy Spirit. I like to say the Holy Ghost. Um, the 9th verse says this. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him stone? Or if he asks fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much shall your Father, which is in heaven, give you good things of him that asks him? Two things here. The word gift, God is saying, listen, if you, being a natural person, born in sin, being evil, have a child, and if your child asks for bread, you're not going to give him a stone to eat instead. 
If they ask for fish, you're not going to give them a serpent that's going to bite them. Right. So two things are happening here. God is letting you know, if you ask me for something, I'm going to give you something good. So if you ask for a husband and, and, and I get one out man out of your life, it's because that one is stone. I'm going to give you one that's right. If you ask for a wife and you have a woman in your life and he gets that wife out of your, that woman out of your life, he, it's because he's going to give you the one he's supposed to have. Yes. If you ask for a job and you lose a job, you know, I need a good job. I need a good paying job. Or I need a pay increase. He might have to get you off of one job into another. He said, listen, if you ask me, I'm going to give you good things. If you being a natural person going to give your children good things, what do you think your father in heaven and remember, one of the, 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 the uh, symbolisms of the Holy Ghost is gift. Mm -hmm. So God will give you. So we see here, you can also receive the Holy Ghost by asking. The Bible says if you ask God, believe me, for the Holy Ghost, you receive him. Mm -hmm. I asked God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost with heaven speaking in tongues, and I was at home. Praying and praying and fasting and praying. I heard about this Holy Ghost. I seen people doing the Holy Ghost and I wanted to know if the tongues was real and all this other stuff. So I said, Lord, you know, I'm not a fake person. I need to know. And I don't want to be in, in, you know, I was into science and all this stuff, so I felt like it was mind manipulation, you know, crowd manipulation. So I was at home, and I said, well, you feel me right now. You said in your word, if I ask, and he filled me. And when he filled me with the Holy Ghost, I began to speak in other tongues. And I was laughing and crying at the same time. Because I was crying because of the Holy Ghost. It was so overwhelming. And I was laughing because I was speaking. And then I was crying. Like, oh, do do do. And then I was laughing because I was speaking. And I was in shock because I'm not fake. When, it, when, when the baptism of the Holy Ghost happened to you and the manifestation of happened to you, you're going to know because you're not fake. See, that's something you have to experience. It can't be explained. Amen? So you can, you can receive the Holy Ghost by asking God. He said, listen, if I'm your father, you ask me, uh, I will give you the gift if you ask. Okay? Matthews uh, 10, 17 through 20 says this. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to counsel, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. Now, Jesus was warning the disciples, so listen, and I, I'm going to tell y'all. Let me tell you something. Just because you go to church don't mean everything will be all right. And everybody in the church ain't okay. That's true. And everybody in the church don't believe the same thing. That's right. And they will take counsel against you. Jesus said they're going to deliver you up in the synagogues. The synagogues is another word for church. We call it a church, but really it's a synagogue or a temple. He said they will deliver you up in the synagogue. And, and if you read later on in the book of Acts on, they did. They had the disciples before the kind. They had Jesus before them people. Church folk crucified Jesus. It wasn't sinners. And look what he says. The 18th verse says, And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. So this is telling you, he said, you're going to even be brought to court. Okay? So what we can maybe find out here is the Holy Ghost will even be your lawyer. He will be your representative in court. The Holy Ghost in you will be a wonderful counselor. This is what God told them. He promised this was going to happen. Look what he said in the 19th verse. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak. For it shall be given to you in that same hour what you shall speak. How is it going to be given to you? For it is not ye, meaning you, that speak, but the spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. So this is an important reason to have the Holy Ghost. When you got to go deal with the people about rent, when you got to go to court, if you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will give you, and we're going to talk about the gifts. There was a gift called the Word of Wisdom. He will give you something so profound to say. I'm telling you, they'll drop all charges. Or to give you favor. Amen? Mm -hmm. You hear me? He's a wonderful, you hear people talking about Jesus is a wonderful counsel. What do you mean the counsel? He's the spirit of counsel. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. When he left, and he ascended. He said, I'm going to send you a comforter, which will repeat, re put you in remembrance of me, right. which is the Holy Ghost. But now the Holy Ghost in the Old Testament used to rest upon certain people and use certain people. Now the Holy Ghost can come inside of us for those of us who are saved and who receive him. And now he can work through us being the wonderful counselor. So here it is, it's the promise. Jesus said, listen, when you get brought before governors, kings, when you go to court, don't even worry about what to say. Just open your mouth. There's a scripture that said, open your mouth and I will speak through you. The Holy Ghost will speak through you. That's why it is important to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues and prophesying so you know you have him. Amen? Amen. Okay, Matthew 12, the 28th verse says this. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, well, let me tell you what was going on. Jesus was casting out demons and devils, 
And they said he did it by the spirit of Beelzebub, which means the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because the Catholics, they do exorcisms. Mm -hmm. And you know, they always lose. The priests get killed. They get bad up. Because right. really, it's the demon in them working with the demon there. And they play them with them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for every fake thing, there's a real thing. Yeah. And, and Jesus cast out demons and devils. And he said, I give you the same power. But how are you going to do it? By the Holy Ghost. So one of the functions of the Holy Ghost is to cast out demons and devils. And here is Jesus even saying it. He said, in that same mouth, um, um, he said, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, Who's the Spirit of God he's talking about? The Rah Elohim, the Holy Ghost. Then the kingdom of God is come unto you. The Holy Ghost is what brings the kingdom of God to us. Amen? Amen. The Holy Ghost is what brings the kingdom of God to us. When you're in a church and you feel that anointing and you feel that crying a lot, that's the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God resting upon you. Matthew 12 and 31. Well, back to, back to Matthew 12, 28. So we see here that the Holy Ghost, one of his jobs is to cast out demons and devils. Right. He gives you the power to cast demons and devils out. So we got to go to deliverance service one day. You're going to see it and experience it. I'm going to take you somewhere where they do it. I'm not going to do all the work. I, I get other ministries to help. I can, but I, well, maybe we will. But I'm not going to do everything. <laughs> anyway. Matthew 12, chapter 31st verse says this. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin is blasphemy and shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. There's a scripture that says you can curse the Father, you can curse the Son, can't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And there's people who can be forgiven for standing there and like, God, I hate you and you mother effer and all this and curse they can talk about Jesus like a dog, because they do. Jesus ain't that sage. I've had people say that. He ain't that sage. He ain't number another man. How dare he? If I don't worship him, I'm going to hell. They, and God forgives them. But it's blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. So we need to understand what blaspheme against the Holy Ghost is. Blaspheme against the Holy Ghost in the Greek is blasphema, which means to slander or speak evil against. Now, that's a hard thing to do. Because some people do it in their ignorance. God don't count that. It's a person who has the Holy Ghost, know the Holy Ghost is talking, and they go against the Holy Ghost. No forgiveness for that. No forgiveness for that. And the reason is, the Bible says the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead will raise us also. Which means you have to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, because if you don't, you won't get raptured. Because that's the Holy Ghost is what's going to wake you up out that grave, or what's called quicken you. Amen? So you can meet Jesus in the air. The third, uh, second verse on the fourth page says this. And whosoever speak of a word against the Son of Man. See, you can talk against Jesus. It shall be forgiven him. But to whosoever speak against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither the world to come. In other words, you can cancel Christmas, honey. You're done. Amen. And that's a hard thing to do. The only person I can really say to blaspheme the Holy Ghost was Satan himself. Because he was right up there with God. He knew who God was. He knew who the Spirit of God was. And he blasphemed. He, he spoke evil against the Holy Ghost and came against him. I'm going to make my uh, uh, um, throne above God's throne. He went against the Holy Ghost. And he got cast out. So that's a hard thing to do. And a lot of people think that they've done this and think that they're unforgettable. I met people who said, well, I blasphemed against the Holy Ghost because I got saved and I was Holy Ghost filled and I backslid and everything. I said, well, you backslid. You didn't blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. You backslid. I'm going to show you what you did do. But you didn't blaspheme the Holy Ghost because you didn't say that the Holy Ghost is a liar. You didn't reject him. Amen? Okay, so now let's go to Isaiah 61. Um, Isaiah, the Old Testament, had to acknowledge his preaching. We're going to see another function of the Holy Ghost. Um, 61st verse says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Okay, Lord meaning ruler means he's talking about Jesus. But he said, The Spirit of the Lord talking about the Holy Ghost, is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me. Circle that word anointed. Another job of the Holy Ghost is to anoint you. When you hear somebody preach and they say that boy is anointed, or you can play music under the anointing. And it says he has anointed me to preach. Okay, circle the word preach. Another job of the Holy Ghost is to anoint you and to preach through you. Good tidings unto the meek. 
He has sent me to bind the broken heart. Remember, he leads you. So he has to send you. Some preachers went and they weren't sent. That's why they have no true anointing. All right? To bind the broken heart. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prisons to them that are bound. And there's so many ways that you can be bound. You can be bound by drugs. You can be bound by worry. You can be bound by all kinds of sin. Addictions, uh, pornography and everything. You know, the Spirit of the Lord will break those things off of you. The anointing will break those things off of you. Luke, the fourth chapter. So that was one of the jobs of the Holy Ghost. Luke, the fourth chapter, the 15th through the 18th verse says this. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as is his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Now look what Jesus did. This was the beginning of his ministry. He wanted to know who he was, and now he was ready to preach. And he says, and there was delivered unto him a book of the prophet Isaiah. Now when it says Isaiah, it's talking about Elijah that we just read. All right, so when it talks about Isaiah, it's talking about Elijah. That's just another Greek uh, pronunciation for Elisha. It says, and he opened up the book and he found the place where it was written. Now here it is in the New Testament, three, six hundred years later, here he is pronouncing the same thing. 18 verse says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and to recover the sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. So another job of the Holy Ghost is to preach and to set free. That whole verse, that's another job of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2, 1 through 21, we're going to read the whole thing. Um, here we see where Jesus had promised them after he ascended to heaven, he said, go and wait, which means tarry, mm -hmm. until the promise. The promise was, and we're going to see what the promise was. We're going to read 21 verses. It says here in Acts, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of, as of a mighty wind. Remember the word uh, symbolic for the Holy Ghost is wind. Mm -hmm. All right? So the Holy Ghost came and filled that room because mm -hmm. they was all on one accord about receiving the promise, right. which was receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And the third verse says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Serving the word cloven tongues, that's another symbolism of the Holy Ghost. Right? This is where we get with the speaking in tongues. Fourth verse says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So lots of times when you receive the Holy Ghost, you're not going to just speak. You, you, you most likely just going to get an utterance. You're going to be like, uh, 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 and then you got my faith just start talking. And when you start talking, God will start speaking through you. What, what is called new tongues. That's his, okay? his language. Right? That's his language. Okay? But what happened, what's happening here, look what happened here. The fifth verse says, and there were devout, uh, they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, Devout men out of every nation under heaven, which means there was every culture there. So that shows that God is not prejudiced. He wants everybody, no matter what your culture is, Spanish, African, whatever, to be saved and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay? The sixth verse says this. Now when this was noised abroad, people heard about it, the multitude came together and were confounded. They was confused. Because that every man heard them speaking in his own language. So what the Holy Ghost did is he became an interpreter. And I told you about that the other day. Yeah. You know, you spoke Spanish, I heard you speaking in Spanish, and I spoke African, you heard me speaking in your language. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it's another job of the Holy Ghost, is to interpret languages. The seventh verse says, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not these men which speak Galileans? He said, they're supposed to speak this one language. And how hear we every man in, his own, in our own tongue, where we were born? So Pathanians and Medes and Elitites and all the dwellers of Mesopotamia and Judea and uh, Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia. That's where all these other people were from. It says, um, Thyriga, uh, Pamathalaya, and in Egypt 
and in the parts of Libya about Syrian and the strangers of Rome, Jewish and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful yeah. works of God. Okay, the wonderful works of God. So the Spirit of the Lord speaking through him and he was talking about the wonderful works and the miracles of God. It says here in the 12th verse, they were all amazed and were in doubt saying one to them, what meaning is this? They didn't understand what it was going on. Now understand, the Holy Ghost was in operation. The 13th verse says, others mocked and said, these men are full of new wine. Because obviously they was acting like drunk people were acting, they was talking and spirit. That's what the Holy Ghost do. Yeah. So when you see people, you know, leaving and bobbing and weaving and stumbling and stuff, because they're drunk in the spirit. Right. Amen. So one of the jobs of the Holy Ghost is to get you drunk in the spirit. New wine, circle that. It's also a depiction of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. 14 verse says this. But Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. But these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is the third hour of the day. In other words, it's too early to drink. All right? So they wasn't drunk, because they didn't came to the hour. Drink. Their culture is they drunk wine at a certain time of the day. He said, it's too early in the day. Ain't nobody drink no wine. The 16th verse says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And the Old Testament prophet Joel prophesied that this would happen. And here's his prophecy. 17th verse says, and it shall come to pass in the last days. All right, so the prophecy came from the prophet Joel. <coughs> shall come to pass in the last days. Um, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Circle the word prophesy. We're going to talk about that. Prophesy just means the gift of prophecy. Don't let nobody twist it. And we're going to get into this later on about these women pastors. They try to use this scripture to bring validity to it. This scripture has nothing to do with pastoring. It said the gift of prophecy. People say, well, prophecy is the word of God. The word of God is the prophecy. But that, if you look it up in the original context, that word prophecy meant the gift of foretelling the future. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So when everybody who has the Holy Ghost should have the ability to prophesy, whether they are prophet or not. It says, and your young men shall see visions, circle visions, the Holy Ghost will give you visions. And we'll study later on what a vision is. A vision is like a dream, but a vision is seeing it exactly like it is. You ever had a dream that came to pass? That wasn't a dream, that was a vision. If it happened just like you saw it, you had a vision. Dreams have to be interpreted. If you dreamt it and it happened, I used to have vivid dreams of the color of a car and everything, what the person said and it came to pass. People like to call it deja vu. No, you had a vision of the future. All right? He said, and they shall see visions, and all men shall dream dreams. The 18th verse says, and on my servants and on my handmaidens, including the women, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Not preach. People going to try to lie and tell you, circle that word, look it up for yourself. It don't mean preach. It don't mean pastor. It means the gift of prophecy. 19th verse says, And I will show wonders in heaven from above and signs of earth beneath, blood and fire, vapor and smoke, and the sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord. Talking about judgment day. Before that day come, these things are going to happen. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How do you get saved? You call on the name of the Lord. Who is the name of the Lord? Jesus the Christ. Acts 8, 12-17. It says, But when they believed, Philip preaching these things concerning the kingdom of God and, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So we need men and women need to be baptized. <coughs> Then Simon, the 13th verse, himself also believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip, and wondering, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Are the line miracles and signs? The Holy Ghost comes, one of the attributes of the Holy Ghost is to work miracles and signs. So when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, do not limit him. He wants to use you to work miracles and signs through your hands. 
You know, we run around waiting for the great preacher, this great evangelist, and the so-called Benny Hens of life to do these things. And, you know, it's not for one person to do. It's for everybody that name the name of Christ who is baptized with his spirit. Amen? Amen. So people are wrong when they keep flocking at these one people with everybody. At every church, this should be happening. Okay? If it's not happening, something's wrong. We need to get there. Okay? So signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Now listen, he heard that these people got saved, right? Mm -hmm. Look what it says. Who when they, in the 15th verse says, when they came down and prayed for them, he prayed for them. That they might receive the Holy Ghost. Underline that. You can receive the Holy Ghost through prayer. There's many ways to receive the Holy Ghost. He prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. The 16th verse says, For as yet he was not, he was fallen upon none of them. Only they that were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then, 17th verse, put a star next to it. They laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. So you can receive the Holy Ghost by the laying of hands. That's why when people get their hands laid on, you see them speaking in tongues. You know, some people receive the Holy Ghost by the laying of hands. So don't let nobody tell you, oh, you ain't supposed to lay hands on nobody to receive the Holy Ghost. It's right here. They laid hands on them and they received. Past tense, they got them. The Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. One of the jobs of the Holy Ghost is to give you spiritual gifts. So spiritual gifts are real. Witches aren't the only one who have gifts. To be honest with you, even the witches, the gifts they got came from God, but they use them through the spirit of the devil. But God got more powerful gifts than any witch, any fortune teller through the Holy Ghost. You don't have to go to no fortune teller. You need to go to a Holy Ghost filled church with somebody who got the Holy Ghost who can prophesy in your life and you ain't got to pay them no palm reading, no 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars to work your case and keep going back to them. You don't need no fortune teller and no seance and all this other crap. Amen? Amen. You need the Holy Ghost. Here is what happens when you have the Holy Ghost. Paul wanted to teach these people about the spiritual gifts. The first verse says, now concerning spiritual gifts. Uh, circle spiritual gifts. That is a job of the Holy Ghost. He gives spiritual gifts. Brethren, I will not have you ignorant, which just means not to know. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Your mother and your father and them told you, wrap something with a piece of paper, mix oil, do this, say this prayer, do Psalm 23, light a candle. All that's witchcraft. Spray this, dip this, roll that. Witchcraft. Charismatic witchcraft. Amen? Amen? You need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost don't use art. This is what he used. He said in the third verse, Wherefore I give unto you understanding that no man speak about the Spirit of God, not the Rock Elohim, called Jesus a curse, that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. You cannot call him your Lord, meaning he's ruling your life, but by the Holy Ghost. Because he ain't ruling your life if you don't have the Holy Ghost. The fourth verse says this, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. What spirit are we talking about? The Holy Ghost. Diversity means there are different types of gifts. But it's the same Holy Ghost that operates in them all. Alright? Mm -hmm. And it says there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Let me explain to you. I might have healing and you might have healing. I might heal somebody by just speaking to them. You're healed in Jesus' name, they get healed. You might have to heal them by rubbing them. You might have to heal them by putting oil on them right. or doing something or making them get up and walk. Right. So that's the administration means how he works through you. Right. Same gifts also operate differently. So don't try to put God in a box and if somebody heals differently than you do or speak in tongues differently than you do or prophesies differently than you do means it ain't God. Yes, it is. But God works really according to your personality right. and he allows it to be different because it's of different people personalities. Amen. Okay, the sixth verse says, and there are diversities of operations, different ways he's going to operate, but the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Okay, so God gives us gifts to help each other by the Holy Ghost. For to one is given the Spirit of word of wisdom. This is what I'll tell you. You have the Holy Ghost. God will give you a, a word of wisdom 
or how to do something, you know, to say something the right way or carry something out the right way. You know? You know how we mess up. We say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost gets you to say the right thing at the right time. Okay? Um, and it says, another, a word of knowledge by the same Spirit. A word of knowledge is this. You don't know how to fix a problem. Something go wrong, all of a sudden, God put it in your mind just what to do, what was wrong with it. And you'll undo something, do this, do that, and fix it without ever being a mechanic. Amen? Amen. A word of knowledge. I got stories I can tell you about that. I've seen it in operation. All right? Um, I've been around ministers, and hopefully we'll you all get to experience them. Uh, they give people words of knowledge about sickness in their body. They're not doctors, and they can tell them the, the cause and the sickness and everything. God has given them a word of knowledge. And then the Holy Ghost goes in there and starts fixing it. And he tells them the Holy Ghost is fixing your thyroid. And he's fixing this and he's doing that. And it's because he's giving them a word of knowledge. So when all the people y'all mocked on TV thought they was jokes when they was healing people and all that. And telling them what was wrong with them and the people crying. It was the Holy Ghost working as a word of knowledge through that man or woman of God. Okay. To another faith. Some people have so much. God given by the Holy Ghost so much faith. They have faith to do anything. Raise a dead, start a job, everything. God will give you a spirit of faith to go out and do things. And we'll teach on what faith is. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. We know what healing is. Page 7, the 10th verse says this. To another, the working of miracles, all kind of stuff. Raising the dead, you know, all kind of stuff. To another, prophecy, foretelling the future. Telling what happened in the past, the present, and the future, really, is prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. You have the ability to know what it, that spirit is. Is it a demon or is it an angel? Or is it a human spirit? It is not only people think discerning of spirits. I can feel what you feel. No. Discerning of spirit is the ability to see and know the difference between good and evil spirits. So you have the Holy Ghost. You, the Holy Ghost will allow you to see spirits. I've seen demons. I've seen angels. I've seen them. I've seen human spirits doing astral projecting, walking through my house, because people can do that. Yes, they can. And we're going to talk about that. I'm going to teach you about that. Through witchcraft, they can astral project. And I can prove to you that you've seen a demon or somebody astral projecting your house. How many times have you ever seen a dark shadow in the corner of your eye? Yes. And you felt it. You knew something was there. Mm -hmm. And that something was a somebody. You knew it wasn't something. Somebody was there. When you turned and looked, all of a sudden it went away. Your spirit picked it up. Mm -hmm. See, the Holy Ghost will turn that up and let you identify that. I'll tell you some testimonies that, that, happened, that happened to me. Of course. Because you're spirit and your spirit will catch spirits. And the same thing is you can be sitting down and you know a spirit because you like the hair on your own. No, it has nothing to do with the hair on your own. Nothing. That may be a physical reaction, but that has nothing to do with it. Like it touching. No, because you don't know. The Holy Ghost, you're going to know. You're going to know this is an evil spirit or an angelic spirit, or a human spirit. You're going to know. You're not going to get the woozies. You're not going to feel strange. You are going to know. Just like I'm looking at you and I know you sitting there. That's how you're going to know. The Holy Ghost is real. He don't play those games. He don't play that if, ends, and buts. He don't miss. Okay. He's a spirit of truth and accuracy. Okay. Like my husband. He had a friend. Well, they're still friends, but they don't see each other. They used to. And one day he, that person came to the house. He was a man. And he came up on the step. And he was getting ready to come in the house. And I just, like, oh no. Mm -mm. Like that. My mm -hmm. husband said, we're wrong. I said, oh no, he can't come in here. Right. And he said, how you mean he can't? I said, he can't come in this house. Mm -hmm. And he said, look man, my wife said you can't come in the house. Mm -hmm. But I didn't say it in the front of him. But after he left, I right. told him. I said, you know why I said he could come in the house? Because he was bringing all the evil spirit mm -hmm. into the south, and mm -hmm. we don't need that. Right. Yeah. And he said, are you serious? I said, yeah, baby. I said, I am serious. He couldn't come in this house. Amen. Amen. And every time he comes to my house, he stay outside because he could not come in my house. Now, see, the, the Holy Ghost would allow you to see what them spirits were and know what they are. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? The Lord was just gracing you to let you know yeah. something ain't right about this man. Right. And we all have that ability because we were made in the image of God. Right. We have a portion of his spirit. And some of his spirit in us lets us know what spirit ain't in. Yeah. But what the Holy Ghost do, the baptism of the Holy Ghost do, he will identify. Uh -huh. You would have known exactly what those spirits were. Oh, and you would have been able to call them out. 
you would have said something. You would have been saying what it is. Mm -hmm. Witchcraft, adultery, child molestation. You would have been able to say what that spirit is. Mm -hmm. Amen? Okay. So, so that's, the, that's the difference. Okay. Okay? Okay, so um, where was I? Oh, discerning of spirits. And another diverse kinds of tongues. Different kinds of tongues. Remember, we're going to talk. I'm going to teach you all on tongues. But you have an unknown tongue. And you have a tongue where the Spirit of the Lord himself speaks through you that you don't know. You have a tongue that you speak. You know what you're saying. But if nobody else knows what you're saying, that somebody else can interpret that tongue. You have what is called a warfare tongue. You have a praise tongue. Yes, it's all in there. I'm going to teach you about it and show you diverse kinds, different kinds of tongues. Amen? Okay, and to another, the interpretation of tongues. Sometimes you go speak in tongues. I've been to churches, and if y'all travel with me, we're going to go to churches where you see somebody get up and go, yeah, that about yeah, that about see that about see that about see that about and whatever, whatever, whatever. And, you know, then when they sit down, another person get up and say, and the Lord is saying they'll interpret what they say. You see how much the church is missing? And I know churches where this is operating. And I've yet to see it here in this part of South Carolina. So, like I said, you know, this, everything we're reading about, is supposed to be happening in every church, in every service. Yeah, that's true. In every service. Back then, they wasn't even in a church building. And this was going on in the streets. <coughs> this was going on in people's houses, wherever they met. The Holy Ghost was doing these things. You see what I'm saying? But people are not taught. So they don't allow the Holy Ghost to do what he got to do. Okay, so this is supposed to be, and the reason I'm, I'm, I'm pushing and emphasizing it with y'all is because y'all can be the birth of that thing. Whether y'all be with me or not, y'all need to know. And let me tell you something. I go to churches, and I used to testify, and they thought it was just something slick to say. And I say, in case the Holy Ghost ain't here, I brought him with me. And I begin to prophesy. I begin to speak in tongues. People get healed. Demons get cast out. And I go, ooh, ah, you know, ooh, ah. And it's not because I'm an apostle. I did it before I was an apostle. I just did it as a believer. Because he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. If you have the backs of the Holy Ghost, this is what you move in. Okay? Mm -hmm. Not just prophecy. You move in all these things. If you prove yourself faith over one, God will start adding more gifts. Okay? So he says, but all, the 11th verse says, but all these work of the one safe, self same spirit. The one Holy Ghost does all this through all these people at the same time. Divided to every man severely as he wills. So it's nothing that you do. The Holy Ghost will choose you to operate through you. So what you need to do is be filled with the Holy Ghost and be a willing vessel that whichever way you want to operate, know how he operates, and be ready for him to use you in any one of those ways. Galatians, the fifth chapter, says this. Now, the works of the flesh are not... Now, Paul was telling them to know the difference between somebody who has the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and someone who don't. Right. So, you'll know the Spirit of God and not the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So, he said this. Now, the works of the flesh are manifested. Manifest means shows up. Which of these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, last lavish living, <coughs> idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, Emotions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Go look them up, but we're going to do a study on them later. I just don't want to prolong the study. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, partying, and such like. Of which I tell you before, and as I have told you in the time past, that they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Not going to heaven. But the fruit of the Spirit... Of what spirit? Barak Elohim. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, putting up with people mess for a long time, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Okay? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4 and 30, and we're almost out of here. The third verse says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, where ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay, I defined the word greed for you. You can do this because you have free will. Okay, listen to me. You can stop the Holy Ghost. How many times you have been in church, you felt the Holy Ghost falling and you was fighting. I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. You're quenching the Holy Ghost. You don't do that. You go with him. 
you let them have his way. But you can grieve him as well. The Bible says here, um, the definition of grief is to make sorrowful, to affect with sadness, cause grief. He's a person. Do you know the Holy Ghost gets sad? He gets grieved. He's sad when people ain't saved. He's sad when you're hurt. He grieves when you're hurt. He grieves when you're done without. He cries when you cry. Cause grief. To throw into sorrow. To grieve. To offend. To make one uneasy. The Holy Ghost in you will be uneasy when you're around somebody. The wrong people. You'll feel an uneasiness. That'd be the Holy Ghost being grieved by that person. You see, I told you he's a person. He has a personality. He feels. We see he leads, he feels, he, he's just like you. He feels, he cries, anything. Okay, our last verse. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 gave a list of what you should do and how you know you should carry yourself in God. And one of the last things he, 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 he mentioned in the ninth verse was quench not the spirit. Page 7. Mm -hmm. Quench not the spirit. The word quench is like a fire. Remember, the Holy Ghost is like fire. It's for water. Don't, don't minimize the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost want to make you run, run. If the Holy Ghost want to make you shout, shout. If the Holy Ghost make you want to cry, cry. If the Holy Ghost want to make you speak his love, don't quench him because you can't quench him. Right, right. And if I would for a title, only you can prevent this fire right. or this forest fire. Only you can prevent it. It's supposed to be forest fire. There's two fires. There's hell fire and there's Holy Ghost fire. Right. You can prevent both of them. You can prevent yourself from going to hell by being saved and Holy Ghost filled. But you can also prevent the Holy Ghost. You can quench him. So when you get baptized, don't quench the Holy Ghost. If you feel the Holy Ghost moving on you, let him do whatever he want to do. If he want to knock you out, let him knock you out. Because he's going to do something for you. Amen? Amen? Only you can prevent this fire. Now you can stop it. But why would we prevent such a great sweet thing? A consuming fire that's going to burn up all worry and sin. Sickness. Even when you get baptized, if you're sick, if you worry, leave that thing in the water. Let the Holy Ghost come in and die and leave that thing. Let him burn up all your worries and your problems. Amen? Amen. Only you can prevent this forest fire, this Holy Ghost fire. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we give you all the glory and praise. As we studied on the attributes of the uh, Rock Elohim, the Holy Ghost, we thank you that we are open to receiving you and letting you have your way. And even in this baptism, when they get baptized, God, we ask that you fill them with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking tongues and prophesying. And from that day forth, that they'll be sealed to the day of redemption by the Holy Ghost, and they'll rise with you in victory. As we depart from this place, but not your presence. Cover us with your efficacy of your blood. We bind the hand of the enemy of backlash that will try to stop us. We already seen the warfare of worry and sickness trying to stop the two candidates from being baptized. But the devil is a liar. That's a great sign that you're going to move by your power. We ask that you cover them. Think of the hedge of protection about them. We cancel the plan of every demonic force and spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We thank you for tuning in this week to 2 Timothy 2.15. If you would like a copy of today's message or information, please write to the Houses of Prayer, Praise, and Worship at 287 Chippewa Drive, Columbia, South Carolina, 29210. Or visit our website at www.thopaw.org and ask for message by title or number. If you would like prayer, please call 772-626. 6351 or email us at thoppaw at aol.com. So until next time, may God richly bless you. Second Timothy, to fear to show that's a public to God to be a work in me to never be ashamed. I reckon the body and the what a truth this is. Second Timothy, to fear things better to show that's a public to God to be a work in never be ashamed. I reckon the body and the what a truth this is. Second Timothy, to fear things.